the objective of this video is to graph, if possible, all this equation and then see some common characteristics of uh, the graph that we are drawing. So let's start with the first graph. So y is equal to x squared. So this is uh, called the basic parabola. I call this the basic parabola. So let me copy this and uh, paste it here. Okay. So paste and I want to graph this. And now to graph, let's uh, make the x and the y and the coordinates. So this is the x x, sorry, x coordinate and you've got y which is defined as y is equal to x squared and I'll write c for coordinate. So let's take some negative and positive values. So let's start with say negative 3. Uh, okay, or let's start with negative 2. So let's start with negative 2. If you take negative 2, y is defined as x squared. So you have to put this in the bracket. Negative 2 squared. Now negative 2 squared, you should know, is negative 2 times negative 2. And negative times negative gives you positive. So let me write C here. So this is 4. So when x is negative 2, y is 4. Okay, so let's take negative 1. So this is negative 1 squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. So when x is negative 1, y is going to be 1. So let's take, say, 2. Sorry, so let's take 0. So that's 0 squared, which is 0. So when x is 0, y is 0. y is 0. So if you take 1, it's 1 squared. So let me put this in the bracket, which is 1 times 1. I'm writing 1. That's 1 comma 1. And if you take 2, if it, this is 2 squared, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. So this is 2 comma 4. So let's graph this. I want graph in the Cartesian. So I want to. So let's plot the points here. Okay, so I can see the points here. So let's plot the point. Negative 2 comma 4 is this point. Okay, negative 1 comma 1 is this point. 0, 0 is this point. You got 1 comma 1 which is this point. And 2 comma 4 is this point. Now if you join this, you can't draw a straight line, so you have to use freehand. And the shape that you're going to get is called a parabola. So you draw the, you join the points using your free hand. So it's going like this. So this is called a parabola. So this is the equation of this graph is y is equal to x squared. So let, let me talk about this. This is one of the most important graphs you're going to see in secondary school. This is called a basic parabola. So these two sides, so these two branches, are symmetrical. So if you draw a dotted line as the mirror line, so the, your y-axis is the mirror line. So this line is called, or the y-axis is called the axis of symmetry. This is called the axis of symmetry. Or in simple language, it is can be treated as a mirror line symmetry. So why, why it's symmetry means these two are reflection of each other. So this is one branch and this is the other branch. So if you treat this as a mirror line, so let me write that is as a mirror. If you treat this as a line, as a mirror line or line of symmetry or axis of symmetry, these two are reflection of each other. Okay, so the next equation is y is equal to x squared plus 1. So let me go back. So let me delete this. Okay, delete. I want x squared plus 1 now. So the equation changes to y is equal to x squared plus 1. 
So what will happen here? I want you to do this yourself. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. You can pause the video and try to do this yourself. So let me... Hopefully you have done this. So I'm going to directly write the answer. So yeah, this is negative 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 is 5. So then x is negative 2 is 5. Then x is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Then x is 0. 0 squared is 0. Plus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So the coordinates are negative 2, comma, 5, negative 1, comma, 2, you got 0, comma, 1, you got 1, comma, 2, and then you got 2, comma, 5. So the graph would look like this. So let's plot the point, negative 2, comma, 5. So this is this point. Then you got negative 1, comma, 2. Then you got 0, comma, 1, 1, comma, 2, and 2, comma, 5. So if you join these points, what are you going to get? So let me join. So this branch, so this branch goes like this. This goes up to infinity like this. And this is the other branch. Let me draw it better. It goes like this. It's Okay, so the equation of this graph is y is equal to x squared plus 1. So just let me, expl uh, let me draw y is equal to x squared, x squared again so that you can see. The y is equal to x squared was looking like this. Negative 2, negative. This was here. And this is 1, 1, 2, 4. So if you look at this graph, so let me use with a red color. This is the graph of y is equal to x squared. So what has happened? What can you see? So this is y is equal to, this is the graph of y is equal to x squared. This red graph is y is equal to x squared. And this is the graph of y is equal to x squared plus 1. So what has happened? So let's compare the point. This point has gone 1 up. This point, 1 comma, negative 1 comma 1 has gone 1 up. This has got 1 up, this has got 1 up. So each of the points, if you look at the points carefully, this parabola, which is the blue parabola, is the transformation of this parabola. It has gone 1 up. Okay, so, so let me, you can again pause the video and try to graph the next equation, y is equal to x squared minus 1. Let's graph this equation, y is equal to x squared minus 1. So we need to change the y and the coordinates. Okay, so this was the blue graph. So I'm going to draw a green graph for this. So this is y is equal to. So let me change this. Let me use a green color. So your y is equal to x squared minus 1. Okay, I would like you to do this yourself. So this is c for coordinate. So this would be 4 minus 1, which is 3. Because negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So the coordinate is negative 2, comma, 3. Negative 2, comma, 3. Yeah, this would be 1 minus 1, which is 0. So 1, negative 1, comma, 0. If it is 0, it will be 0 minus 1, which is minus 1, which is 0, comma, minus 1, 0, comma, minus 1. If it is 1, it will be 1 minus 1, which is 0. So it is 1, comma, 0. And for 2, it will be 4 minus 1 again, which is 3, 2 comma 3. So let's plot the point, and I'll use a green color. The first point is negative 2 comma 3. 
negative 2 comma 3 here. Okay, the next point is negative 1, negative 2, negative 1 comma 0. So this is this point. Then you've got 0 comma negative 1, 1 comma 0, and 2 comma 3. This is here. I want you, you to look at, so let me use a green color. So let us join these points. This is this branch, and this is this branch. So what's happening here? This is again a parabola. The equation of this is y is equal to x squared minus 1. So when you compare with the red which, which, uh, with the red parabola, which y is equal to x, x squared, what can you see or what can you say about the green parabola? Well, it has gone 1 down. This point 0, 0 has gone down to 0, 1. This point, which is negative 1, 1, has gone to 1, negative 1, 0, and so on. So if you look at the red parabola, which is a basic parabola, and you compare with this, this negative 1, what it does is, it takes this parabola, the whole thing, 1 down. Okay, so I would like you to graph 4 and 5, and 6, 7, 8, and 9 yourself, and see, first plot, it, plot the points, and compare it with this parabola, y is equal to x squared. Okay, so all other parabolas are transformation of this parabola. So what we are saying is this parabola, x squared plus 1 means this parabola has gone 1 up. Minus 1 means the basic parabola has gone 1 down. This would mean, if you graph it, you will see that the basic parabola, or each point of the basic parabola will go 2 up. This will be 2 down. I want you to investigate about these graphs. What will happen when you compare this with this type of graph? All these four has a common feature if you graph it. First, take any point, any values of x, find the values of y, plot the points and see how each of this graph is related with this basic parabola. In this video, I want to go over some questions on uh, multiplying and dividing complex numbers in polar form. So let me talk about some conventions uh, and then we can understand how we write. Okay, so, so this is the y-axis and this is your x-axis. Uh, okay, so this is your x-axis, okay, or this is your real arm, not y-axis. We're calling this the z-axis or the imaginary axis. Let me talk about what is this z1. z1 is 18 cis 2.56. So this is in radians and this is also in radians. So I hope you know that uh, pi radians, I'll write only pi, pi radians is 180 degree. Okay, and pi by 2, pi by 2 is 90 degree. Okay, so if you want to say this in uh, okay, so 18 cis 2.56 is, so if you want to write this as decimal, so this is 3.14 radians, is 80 degrees, sorry, 180 degree, and 1.57, 1.57 radians is 90 degree. So if you say times this by, uh, so it's 270 degree, if you change this, 270 degree is 3 pi by 2. And 3 pi by 2 as a decimal is 4.71. Okay, so now there's a convention to write the angle, the radian angle or degree between 0 and 180. So if it's in the first, first, this is your first quadrant, this is your second quadrant, this is your third quadrant, and this is your fourth quadrant. So if a complex number is in the first or the second quadrant, it will be the, the angle, the argument, would be between 0 and, so, so let me call this 0, if this is a 0, 0 degree, or 0 radians, this is 
180. Okay, so that is 180 degrees 3.14. So you can call this, you uh, refer the angle this way, that is clockwise in this quadrant, or you can refer this way, which is anti-clockwise. This is positive and this is negative. Okay, so I think I have confused you too much, so let me delete this whole thing. Okay, so let me first explain what is 18 cis 2.56. 18 cis 2.56, you have to understand the graphical meaning of that. This means it's a complex number. Say this is your real arm and this is your imaginary arm. So 18 cis 2.56, so this is 0, this is 3.14, this is 1.57. So we are talking about a complex number at a distance of 18. So this is not drawn to scale. So we are saying this complex number, say this is your complex number z, at a distance, so this is the origin, this is your O origin, this distance from 0, so from origin to z is 18, 18 units, and this angle is 2.56 radian. That's the simple meaning of that, 2.56 radian. This is your z1, this is your z1. And if you want to do z2, z2 is at a distance of 6, okay, this would be one third of this, and an angle of negative 1.44. So this is zero, so let me say this is zero degrees, so zero radians. This is, uh, you can call this 3.14 this way. If you're going anti-clockwise, this is 3.14, or you can also call this minus 3.14. Oh, not 3.14, sorry, it's 1.57, sorry, because pi, yeah, sorry, 3.15 was right. So this is 3.14 and this is minus, you can go, if you go this way, it is minus 3.14. This point, when I, if you're reaching this point, this is minus 1.57, half of pi is, three, half of 3.14 is one, uh, 1.57 and yeah, you are reaching 1.57. Okay, I hope I'm not confusing you. I'm talking about the, uh, the circular motion. So just making a guess, 1.44 is between zero and minus 1.57. And it has a distance of, radial distance of six. So 1.44 will be about somewhere here. I'm not sure, so this is a guess. So this is only an understanding, a graphical understanding of these complex numbers. So this is your Z2, which is, has got a distance from year to year, the, the distances, or the, uh, the distance from the origin to Z2 is six. And this angle, as it is going underneath the x-axis is called minus 1.44. That's what the whole thing is, okay. So this is two complex number in the argand plane. Okay, so let me write the two formulas that again you should know to multiply and divide complex number. C1, if Z1 is R1 cis theta1 and R Z2 is R2 cis theta2, Z1 times Z2 would be R1 times R2 cis theta1 plus theta2. I have made a video on this, okay, hopefully I don't remember exactly, but you can watch my video. I think I have made a video on this, and Z1 divided by Z2 using the same logic is R1 divided by R2 cis theta1 minus theta 2. It's a very easy formula to remember. When you're multiplying complex numbers, you multiply the modulus. You multiply, this is the modulus, 
R1 and R2 are the modulus. You multiply the modulus and add the arguments. And in, in a dividing complex numbers, you divide the compl uh, you divide the modulus and take away the argument in the same order. So using this formula, so let's do first question. What is Z1 times Z2? So let me use red color. So Z1 times Z2 using this formula would be R1 times R2, so which is 18 times 18 times 6, cis theta 1, which is 2.56, plus take away 1.44. Okay, and this is equal to 18 times 6. This is 60 plus 48, which is 108, cis. Let me use my calculator. So this is 18 times 6, just to confirm. This is 108 and 2.56 take away 1.44 and 1.12. That's acceptable. So this is 1.12. As a convention, this argument is has to be between 0 and 3.14 or 0 and, or 0 to minus 3.14. So this answer is right. Okay, so let me do the next question. Let me delete. I want to highlight and delete. Hopefully, yes. Okay, the second question is z squared. So z squared, z, okay, z1 squared. So let me write here, z1. Okay, I had, okay, I need to change the questions. So I tried to copy from a different book without changing. So this is say Z1 squared. Okay, so let me write this properly. So this is Z1 squared and this is Z1 divided by Z2. This is Z1 divided by Z2. And the last question is z2 squared over z1. Okay. So z1 squared, z1 squared, you want to find uh, that is 18 cis 2.56 times 18 cis 2.56. So using this rule, so this is 18 times 18, 18 times 18 cis uh, 2.56 plus 2.56, which is how much? It is so let me use a calculator 18 squared 18 squared is 324 so this is 324 says 2.56 times 2 is 5.12 okay now 5.12 is not in the uh, this is right there's nothing wrong here so if you want to understand 5.12, so let me show you graphically so that you understand. So 324, it's a huge distance. 5.12, you're going clockwise. So this is three point, this is, if you're going this way, this is 3.14, and this will be 4.71. So 5.12 comes somewhere here. So it's, suppose this is a long distance, not, again, not drawing the scale. So this distance is 324. And this angle is 5.12. Because you're going above the x-axis. Because you know, you know this is 3.14 and this is 270 degree is 4.71. So 5.12 has to be this. But by convention, we want this angle. We write this angle, not this angle in positive. If it's greater than 3.14, 5.12 is 
it write in the negative form. So this is, this angle is same as from 2 pi, that is 360 degree. If you take away this, you will get this. So this angle, put a minus out. So this angle, if you want to write in the standard form, is 2 pi minus 5.12. This minus is because you're going below the x-axis. And this whole thing is 2 pi, which is 360 minus 5.12. So let me use a calculator. 2 shift pi minus 5.12, which will be put in negative. So this is negative 1.16. So to write in the standard form, you write 324 cis minus, what was the number? Minus 1.16. Minus 1.16 radians. So this is minus 1.16. So what we're saying is, you go to reach this complex number, you had to go a distance of 324 at an angle of minus 1.16. Or the same thing, you can say you go a radial distance of 324 at an angle of 5.12 radians. It's not degrees, sorry, this is radians. 5.12 radians. Okay, so let me finish off with the third question. Okay, so let me highlight it and cancel it okay cancel and i also want don't want this i need to see the formula so this is c1 divided by z2 c1 divided by c2 is uh what is your z1 z1 is 18 cis 18 cis 2.56 divided by Six cis negative one point four four. So, so this is using the formula. So this is Z one R one divided by R two. So eighteen divided by six is three cis two point five six. Take away negative one point four four. Okay. So you yeah, again you may have to change it. So this is three. Cis. Uh, so again, let me use a calculator. So this is 2.56, take away negative 1.44, which is 4. Okay, so this is exactly 4 radians. Now 4 radians, so again, let me show this graphically. 4 radians is in the fourth quadrant. So uh, so this is a 3.14, so 4. So this is your complex number. So this is at a distance of 3, and this is 4 radians. But by convention, we need to describe this. And as you're going anticlockwise, you have to put a minus 2 pi. That means this full circle is 2 pi, minus 4. So from 360, you take over 4, you get this answer. So you go 2 shift pi minus 4 will give you the exact answer. So this is 2.282 dp or negative. Okay, so your answer is, this is right, there's nothing wrong here. So but we, by convention, this is how you write, minus 2.28 negative 2.28 radians. So this is minus 2.28 radians, this way clock and clockwise, or anti-clockwise, that's four radians. In this video, I want to talk about graphing equations, so basically straight line equation uh, using uh, or plotting the points or the coordinates by from the equation. Okay, so let me write a simple equation. So we want to graph. So the question is graph uh, y is equal to say 2x plus 1. 
Okay, so the easiest way to graph is to find the x and the y coordinates. I'll say this is x. This is the next column, column of y is equal to y is equal to 2x plus 1. And I'll make the third column. I'll call that coordinates. Coordinate or coordinates. Okay. So now in coordinates, you can take any value of x. Okay. So this equation is telling me that that is a relation y is related to x by this equation. So let's take any number. So let me change color. Say, let's start at say negative 3. So what is the equation? y is equal to 2 times x plus 1. So let me write this down. So this is 2 times negative 3 plus 1. So you can use a calculator. Uh, this is negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5. So the coordinate is negative 3 comma negative 5. Okay, so let me take the next number. Suppose if you take uh, negative 1. Okay, so this is 2 times negative 1 plus 1. This is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So here the coordinate is negative 1 comma negative 1. Now what's the coordinate telling me? That when x is negative 3, y is negative 5. When x is negative 1, y is negative 1. So let's take 0 now. Okay, so 0 would be 2 times 0 plus 1. 2 times 0 is 2. No, it is 0. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. Let us take one more. Say let's say, let's say it is 3. Okay, you can take any number. Okay, so let's take 1.5, okay, just for change, uh, or let's take 2.5, 2.5, so 2 times 2.5 plus 1, so 2 times 2.5 is 5 plus 1 is 6, so when x is 2.5, y is 6, so let's plot these points, okay. So the first point is, this is negative 3, so always go across first, you go negative 3, and then you go negative 5, so this is negative 3, negative 5, so this is the first coordinate. Okay, the next point is negative 1, so you first always start at the origin, you go to negative 1, and then you go to negative 1 on the y-axis. Okay. The next point is 0, 1. When x is 0, y is 1. So this is this point. The next point is when x is 2.5. So this is 2.5. Okay, this is 2.5. It is 6. 2.5. 6 would come somewhere here. Okay, 2.5 comma 6. So this point is. Now, if you use a ruler. Okay, so let me use. Okay, I'll use a line 2. If you use a ruler, so you can join these points and it will be a straight line. Okay, now you mathematically you have to draw an arrow to both sides of the line because it's a line, because this line will go to infinity on both sides. So this arrow indicates that this line is going on forever. So and we write the equation of the line, so you can write the equation of the line is y is equal to 2x plus 1, just like that. Okay, so let's move on to the next graph. So suppose if it is graph, graph y is equal to half x, half x plus 1. So again, the same thing, x, y, y is half x plus 1 is your y, and then we'll write the coordinates. Okay, coordinates. Okay, so let's start with some negative numbers. 
say let's take uh, negative 2. So I will do it directly now with this is, okay, let me do half of negative 2 is half of negative 2 is negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. So when x is negative 2, your y is 0. So let's take uh, negative 1. Half of negative 1 is negative half plus 1. Uh, so let me write negative half. Half of half of 1 is negative half plus 1. You can use a calculator. So 1, this is negative half plus 1 is half. So when x is 1 or negative 1, y is half. So it's difficult to plot half, so yeah, but you can plot half, but if suppose it's a uh, decimal number, it's, it's difficult to plot. Suppose if it is 0 0.3, it's difficult to plot 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. So you should avoid coordinates which has decimals, okay? So let me take 2 now. If you take 2, half of 2 is 1, so it's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So when x is 2, y is 2. So I am not taking 3 because I know if I take 3 I am going to get a half. So I am going to take even numbers. So you can halve even numbers easily. So half of 4 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So when x is 4, y is 3. So let's plot these points. When x is negative 2, this number always tells you across. So from 0 you are going negative 2 and 0 up. That means you're not going up. So this is your point. The next is negative 1, negative 1. You go negative 1 to the left. Negative, ones, negative 1 means you're going to the left and you're going half up. So this is half between 0 and 1. When x is 2, so you're going to the right and you're going up 2. So also coordinates can be understood as this 2 means you're going 2 to the right from origin and then you go 2 up. This means from origin you go 4 to the right and 3 up. So this is this point. And 3 or 4 points is enough to determine the type of graph. And then if you join them, it will be a straight line. Okay, so this is the equation. So the equation of this line is y is equal to half x, half x plus 1. Okay, so let's move on. So let me uh, say right, suppose with a negative number. So y is equal to negative, say, 3x plus 2. Okay, so what happens now? So this is x, y, y is equal to negative 3x plus 2 and then the coordinate. I'll write only C, C for coordinate. So let's start with say negative 2. Okay, so negative 3 times negative 2 plus 2. So let me use a calculator. It's always good to check. So it's negative 3 times <coughs> x is negative. Negative 3 times negative 2 plus 2, which is 8. Okay, so this is 8. So the coordinate is negative 2 comma 8. Let's take negative 1. <coughs> so negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So I'm writing directly. You can use a calculator. It's negative 1 comma 5. Negative 1 comma comma 5. When if you take 0, 0 times anything is 0, so that's going to be 2, so this is 0, 2. I think you can do it faster now. If you take 1, it's negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. Am I right? Yeah, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So when x is 1, y is negative 1. Y is negative 1. I think this is enough to graph the line. So let's graph the points negative 2 comma 8 so I can't plot this so I can I'm crossing this out okay you don't need all the points okay so this is not graphable graphable in this grid okay so that doesn't matter okay 
The next is negative one, you go one to the left and five up. So this is this point. The next point is you you don't go to the right or left. Zero means you're not going to the right or left and then you're just going to up. Neg you one, you're going one to the right and one down. One to the right and one down. Three points is enough, so let me take one more point just. So let me take say two. So this is negative six plus two, which would be four. Negative four, sorry. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. When x is 2, y is negative 4. So the point is 2 comma negative 4. Okay, and then draw the line just like that. And I want you to think what's happening. Why is this li line uh, going down? Okay, how is, what's the relation between this negative 3 and the, sh the type of the line. The line is going down. That means from left to right. If you look from left to right, it's going down. Okay, so we'll, we call this line as going down. Now if you look from right to left, it's going up. So we are looking from left to right. So from left to right, it's going down. Okay. So if you go to the previous graph, from left to right, it is going up. In the previous graph, again from left to right, it's going up. So I want you to just look at the graph and see whether there is a relation between this, how you can graph this is, can you see this two in this graph and this one in this graph? And how these numbers affect the shape of the graph? Okay, so you look at this graph and see why it's going up from left to right. So now for just for practice, I want you to graph these equations yourself by plotting the points. So y is equal to say half or negative half x plus 3. This is one equation. The second equation is y is equal to uh, negative 2 or so let me write it positive 2 thirds. So it's 2 thirds of x minus 1. Okay, so let me write one more. Graph this, y is equal to negative 3 quarter, negative 3 quarter x plus uh, 5. Now, in these now, it will be good if you want to plot, get neat points, it will be good if you plot, if you take x values which are even numbers here are the multiples of 2. Here it will be a good idea to take x's which are multiples of 3 because you can get need coordinates. And here it will be a good idea to take coordinates in multiples of 4. Find the points of intersection if they exist for the following lines and parabolas. So we want to do this graphically and we'll check this uh, so we want to do this algebraically, sorry, and we will check it out graphically later. So this is y is equal to 2x plus 3, which is the equation of a line. This is the equation of a line. And this is a parabola. y is equal to uh, x minus 1. This is a parabola. So, so let me draw a... Uh, line in the parabola just to give you a graphical understanding. This is, oops, so, so this is your x and y axis. This is a general parabola. So this is not this particular case. So let me draw the parabola first. Uh, this is not what I want. So this is a parabola, okay. And you've got a line. Okay, so yeah, a line can intersect, suppose in this case, this line is intersecting this parabola at two different points. So basically the question is, if they're intersecting, this can intersect in two different points. The other possibility is, you can have a line going somewhat like this. Okay, suppose if a line is going like this, this line is not intersecting this parabola. 
okay or you can also have a line like this it's just touching the parabola so here you can say this is a tangent so there are three different ways in which a line and a parabola can intersect each other one is at two different points at one point or they don't intersect and that's why they say if exist so it is uh, we have to do this algebraically first so let's do it so y is equal to 2x plus 3 and y is equal to x minus 1 the whole squared minus 3 so in place of y I can put 2x minus 3 okay so the next step is most difficult step so I can say 2x minus 3 so let me write this again sorry so let me write this second equation first so y is equal to x minus 1 the whole squared minus 3 and y is equal to 2x minus 2x plus 3 so in place of y I can put 2x plus 3 and that's what I'm going to do because it says y is equal to 2x plus 3 so I can say 2x plus 3 is equal to I'm going to write this as x minus 1 times x minus 1 minus 3 so this is 2x plus 3 those who can do it I would like you to do it yourself pause the video and try to do it yourself so this is x squared this is minus x minus x is minus 2x plus 1 minus 3 so this is 2x plus 3 is equal to x squared so let's simplify this two first this is x squared minus 2x minus 2 okay so now I want to make this a quadratic equation so I'm going to I want to make one side 0 so I'm going to take away 2x from this side so I'm going to take up 2x from this side I'm going to take away 3 from this side and I'm going to take 3 from this side so this is two sides of an equation so the right hand side or the left hand side becomes 0 this and this gets cancelled this and this gets cancelled so you're left with 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 so let's write this in the quadratic form so this is x squared minus 4x minus 5 minus 5 is equal to 0 so putting them in brackets this is x minus 5 times x plus 1 is equal to 0 x plus 1 okay so now setting each of them equal to 0 I can say when would this become 0 well x has to be 5 and when would this become 0 when x is negative 1 so these are the x coordinates of the point of intersection okay when x is 5 and x is negative 1 they intersect each other so let me do the working here so we need to find y we have got a simple equation of y y is equal to 2x plus 3 so when x is 5 we know x is 5 so I'm going to put x is equal to 5 in this equation so y is equal to 2 times 5 is 10 plus 3 is 13 so when x is 5 y is 13 so I can say 5 comma 13 is one point of intersection this is one answer now the next is when x is negative 1 so let, let's again put this back in this equation so y is 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 3 is 1 so the other point of intersection is negative 1 comma 1 okay so yeah so let me so let's check this answer so these are the two points of intersection when this line and this parabola intersect each other so let's use our graphic calculator so go to your graph menu and type in the equation 2x plus 3 2x plus 3 in y1 and in y2 I'm going to type in x minus 1 the whole squared 
minus 3. Always check your scale. Shift F3 will give you, take you the scale. I'll make it standard, which is minus 10 to 10 on both the axes. And then go exit and then graph it. So this is your parabola and this is your line. So to find the two points, you go G solve and again F5. F5 is intersection. ISCT stands for intersection. So one point is negative 1, 1. So that's this point. And if you press this replay key, it will take you to the other point, 5, comma 13. Okay, now if you want to make to see the both the points clearly, so I need, I'll take to 20 and then draw it. Okay, so you can see the two points. So this is 5, comma 13 and this is, so again, GSOL F5, negative 1, 1. And if you press this, you'll get 5, comma 13. Okay, so this is the next question I would like you to do yourself. Okay, so this is a parabola. So this is a line and this is a parabola. Okay, so I can I think you can do this yourself. Okay, and I want to do this question where you've got a line and a circle. So yeah, <clears throat> this is a line and this is a circle. So the same process. Okay, we're going to set put y is equal to 2x plus 2 in this equation. Okay, so let me write the circle. Equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared x squared plus y squared is equal to 10. Okay, so let me put y is 2x plus 2. So this becomes x squared plus 2x plus 2. The whole squared is equal to 10. So always be careful in this step. Don't write 4x squared plus 4. That's where most of the students make mistakes. So this is x squared plus, I'll write this in two brackets. So this is 2x plus 2 times 2x plus 2. So you're using the foil and expand it is equal to 10. So this is x squared plus 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then you've got a 2x plus 2x, which is 4x. No, sorry. <laughs> I made a mistake. So this is 2x. 2x times 2 is, so let me write the whole thing. 2x times 2 is 4x plus 2 times 2x. 2 times 2x is 4x plus 4 is equal to 10. So let's simplify this and this and move this to this side. So three things we are going to do together. So this is 5x squared plus 5x, sorry, 8x, 4x plus 4x is 8x, and this is how much? I'm going to take away 10 from both sides, so this is minus 6 is equal to 0. 5x squared plus 5x squared plus 8x uh, minus 6 is equal to 0. So now how will I find the put them in two bracket. Okay, so this will, you have to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so using the quadratic formula, uh, so let's use the quad, using the quadratic formula, using, I want you to do that yourself. Okay, quadratic formula. So let me write the quadratic formula for those who don't know, which is x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, where your a is 5, your b is 8, and your c is negative 6. I want you to do that yourself. So x, I have already worked this out. x is uh, zero point. You can also use a calculator. I'll show you how to do this on the calculator. 0 0.55647 is your x value. Okay, and your that, this is your x1. This is one point of x coordinate. Your x2 would be 
negative 2.15647. So let me show this how you can do this on a calculator directly. So go to equations, go to equation and go to polynomial and then go to the second degree polynomial and there you have to just type in 5, 8 and negative 6. The calculator will work it out for you. Okay and so these are the two values. Okay 0 0.55467 and negative 2 point. Okay and if you put this back in this equation, okay if you put this back in the equation y is equal to 2x plus 2, you will get y1 and y2. So your y1 when x1 is 0 0.55 Six four seven would be three point three point one one two nine four. Okay, and y two is negative two point three one two nine four. Okay, now just to give you a graphical understanding, uh, you haven't learned about circles, maybe not. So this is a y-axis and this is the x-axis. So this is the x and y. Your circle would look somewhat like this. It's a circle with center at 0, 0. So this is a circle which is centered at 0, 0. And here you've got the line y is equal to 2x plus 2. So it goes somewhat like this. Okay, so this point, this, this is what we're talking about. So this is your x1, y1. Uh, sorry, this is your x2, y2. This point is your x2, y2. Both coordinates are negative. Both are negative and this is your x1, y1. Okay, so both are positive in this quadrant and both are negative here. So this is your this point, x2, y2, and this is this point. 